AHS. I'm your host, Emily Toro. And I'm Madeline Holobenko, and you're watching the May episode of Inc. TV. Today, we will recap everything that happened in CHS in the month of May. Let's start off with the SGA elections. With campaigning starting back in April, speeches took place on May 4th, and by the end of the day, CHS knew the SGA for the 2017-2018 school year. Let's go to Vaughn Batista for more information on this year's elections. SGA elections were intense this year, with 12 candidates across the freshman, sophomore, and junior classes competing for just five spots on council. For next year, I'd really like to train our CHS ambassadors to be better and to show the school off in the best way possible, as well as Reform Spirit Week scoring to make it more proportional and make it so more points are available to create a more competitive environment. So what did you think of SGA elections and campaigning in general? Uh, I really liked it. I thought a lot of it towards the beginning was mostly just giving around cookies and stuff, but by the time that it got to speeches and everything, I think the process worked really well. For Inc. TV, I'm Vaughn Batista. Thanks, Vaughn. Along with the SGA, most clubs and grades held elections this month to pick next year's council. Whether it was food, speeches, or posters, every club member got the chance to vote for a candidate. But each club does have a different voting system. They sure do. Personally, I loved the clubs that allowed food and short speeches. Let's head over to Ainsley Better to see the rest of CHS prefers about club elections. I'm Ainsley Better, and I went around CHS asking students what they look for in a club or class council member. I'm looking for whatever Matt Emery is in a class council member. In a good council member, I look for a gentle soul like Jack Hester. And I look for a dedication, determination, and hard work in a club council member. Uh, I'd say that a good quality in a, in a council member is probably somebody who takes initiative and really sends a, a lot of emails out, make sure everybody knows what's going on. Thanks, Ainsley. While the earliest election campaign started back in April, the CHS Spring Drama Show had auditions at the end of December in preparation for their production of the 25th annual Putnam Sp County Spelling Bee. The show took place on May 5th and 6th at Belmar Elementary School, and Evan Quo has a story. On May 5th and 6th, the CHS Drama Club put on a production of the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee at Belmar Elementary School. This was the club's first ever musical production. Directed by Annie Ruoff and produced by Becca Kleffi, it tells the story of six teenagers all competing for the title of Spelling Bee Champion. Each night had guest appearances from members of the audience, including teachers Deb Marr and Virginia Clevenger. For Ink TV, I'm Evan. Now back to Maddie and Emily in the studio. Thanks, Evan. Fake Instagrams, also known as Finstas, have become a popular topic around CHS. I personally don't have a Finsta, but I'm curious to see what they're all about. Let's get students' perspectives on the new way to socialize. Finsta yeah. is on Instagram, and people just post on there like what you wouldn't put on your regular Instagram, like embarrassing stuff that like happened to you, just really like anything that you don't deem worthy for your real Insta. Finstas were made, I think, because just to, like an outlet to put the pictures that you wouldn't want to put for your 1,000 followers on your real Instagram to see, and just like your closest friends is like an outlet to put those funny videos that you didn't have a place to put before. Um, Finsta is just a community where you don't have to feel uh, ashamed to post, what, post whatever you want. Like You could tell your embarrassing stories, you could post pictures that you think you look really good in if you want to, but you just think it's a little bit too risky for the real Insta, you know? Finsta came from fake Insta, but it's weird because Finstas are more real than most of the Instagrams out there. CHS had their annual Junior Senior Prom on May 19th in Manalpin from 6 to 10. With the theme of Starry Night at Prom, students got an endless amount of pictures, food, and songs to dance to. Let's go to Audrey Mannion for more information. Starting at 6, students arrived at the venue to be greeted by CHS teachers and staff. Following the theme of a Starry Night, students received a bag of sunflower seeds before going to their tables. Each table had a centerpiece with one of Van Gogh's famous works recreated by CHS students. Throughout the prom, students were given the opportunity to enjoy buffet-style food, take pictures in the photo booth, or kick their shoes off on the dance floor. After dinner, prom court was announced, consisting of prom king, senior Matt Miller, and prom queen, senior Julia Pardee. At the end of the night, students got to take a vote on the last song, with the winner being Dirty Bit Remix, and left the venue at 10 p.m. Thanks, Audrey. As most know, prom is a very stressful event that takes a lot of preparation. Part of that preparation includes buying prom bids, making hair appointments, and of course, finding the perfect dress. Some girls started the hunt back in January, while others weren't as worried. Shannon Damiano took the halls to see how CHS students found the perfect dress. 
Um, the first store I went to, you have to wait like a half hour to actually get an appointment to look for a dress. So after waiting half hour, I was determined to find one there and not have to drive to another place in Freehold, which is like an hour away from where I live. So I was pretty determined to get that one. I went to two different stores over the course of two days and spent a few hours in the store. Um, only like two days because I started really late and I like had to make a decision right then or I wouldn't have a dress. Um, I ended up finding a white lace dress at David's Thank you, beautiful. Yes? I ended up finding a gray dress at Group USA. So I ended up finding a white two-piece dress at Diane and Company in Freehold or Colts Neck or up there. And I don't usually like two pieces, but I liked it. Thanks, Shannon. That's all we have on the month of May, CHS. See you next week with the results of Color Wars, graduation, and more. Signing off for Ring TV, I'm Emily Toro. And I'm Madeline Holobanko. Have a great day, CHS.